Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today I thought uh, during the halftime of the Totem Hotspur and Everton game that I would give you a little update around the ranch, see if we could get how much we could get in. Uh, I definitely wanted to start on the deck because things have been growing tremendously, so I'm just going to go around, uh, talk a little about you know some of the ones that I'm more excited about, and let you see uh, where everything stands. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, so starting in the corner over here, I have this hickory. I believe it's a hickory. Yeah. I got it. This is the one that I got from underneath my front steps once I moved into the ranch. And I just thought it was so cool. It was literally growing into the step, you know, so it couldn't get any taller. And I'm guessing that's why it got so gnarly. So it's looking more like a uh, garden tree, like a topiary right now. And I'm just really letting it grow in and gain lots of energy because this thing had maybe one leaf. It definitely had one branch. Um, if you check the playlist back on this bad boy, um, actually there might not be one. But anyways, it, it was just basically like this and then one tiny little branch. So it's received one pruning before and I'm gonna let that grow all season. We got the trident, a trident maple. Little baby uh, Pinus strobus. That's one of the weeping white pines that I grew from seed this year. Uh, looks like, hmm, maybe some sort of. Hmm, what is that? Maybe a birch. I don't know, but that that just started to grow in with this Thujaxin and talus. So I'll probably leave that in there for now. Oh, we got a couple more of the same species here. Boom and boom. They're growing up with my surviving white pine. This thing was death, completely covered in mealy bugs. Him and his partner. And all the needles were fried from being in the gar um, basement greenhouse all winter. They hated it, they hated me. But they're coming back to life, I think that's awesome. So this, this is the first time I've seen this plant actually grow. This is a, um, a winterberry. And I believe it'll get red berries. So it came bare rooted uh, at the end of the growing season last year. So I just kind of like planted it and tried to keep it alive. I watered something that looked like just a stick <laughs> for a while. And that one and that one, they're looking good. So they're going to be nice and full this year. And then we'll probably decide whether we want to bonsai them or to keep them, you know, as a nice size tree. A couple of Japanese maples. I'm letting them just grow and thicken up. They're really tall and skinny. Uh, but I think they have a lot of potential. This was my lantana bonsai. I actually pruned this thing down to like just the little trunk. And this is all this season's growth. So that's obviously it's a flowering vine that I am trying to make into a gnarly uh, bonsai. I have not had much luck with vines, but that one's being cool. Down there, a couple Kentucky yellow woods grown from seed. This is my planting with black locusts. And I believe hmm, there were there were a couple crepe myrtles in there. They might have survived. They might not have. Uh, but anyways, that thing is everything's really growing well. So I'm I'm looking forward to those things thickening up this year. They'll be a couple years old. So this is my really really tight forest: white pines, thujax, and talus in the back, and Colorado Bruce, blue spruce up front. I'm going to do much more with the landscaping as they develop and get taller. That's meant to um, mimic one of the, my, in my opinion, famous uh, Connecticut forest traits. And they have really tightly growing uh, Connecticut red and white pines. And they'll be 100 feet tall. And they'll just have like this tiniest little poof of growth, you know, compared to the actual height of the tree. The canopies may be... I don't know, 20 feet wide, 10 feet high. So it's really, it's really a unique thing to be in a forest like that and look up and not see anything to the very top. Very cool. So that one has a bright future in like 10 years. So you see figs growing back nicely. This one will be gnarly for a while, but I got it pretty well developed. So you have to do some hard cuts every once in a while. Lemon laced elderberry starting to grow up, filling in. Last year it didn't have many branches or leaves, so I'm excited about that. The Yamadori white pine that I have, it seems to be doing well after it received its pruning. 
This is this is what I'm really excited about. So these are Japanese black pines grown from seed, okay? And you see, I had them in those biodegradable pouches, which by the way, I probably wouldn't recommend them because it's been a couple of years and they're still around, so they're unsightly. <laughs> I'll have to like cut them out, I guess. Um, but what I'm loving about this idea is I have a couple more of these planters. So I think this winter, instead of doing my pines in the basement greenhouse, which they didn't like, I'm going to put like all the other ones that I have, um, like the red pines that I have from seed and uh, scotch pines, all of them. I'm going to put them in groupings like this in the pot. So like the bigger, deeper pot and the closeness of like the forest planting should keep them through the winter until they get larger um, and more cold hardy. So that's what I'm, that's gonna be a little project that I'll, I'll do this fall. Okay, my battery's about to die, so I'm gonna go plug up. And then half time's probably about over, so. Well, let me just go until the phone dies. Okay, real quick. Maple, try it at maple. Um, that's a sweet birch right there. Got some trees that just like pop up out of nowhere in pots with trees that are probably dead. Look at <laughs> these redwoods have gone insane. Like that's, that is just like, I don't even know what to do with that right now. Some of them are more tame. Uh, yellow wood, this little Yamadori red maple is kicking butt from it's the last time we pruned it, filled in just the way I wanted it. This western red bud is looking beauteous. It's nice, y'all. I'm on to like my third year, on, on the three years total in uh, February. And so I'm starting to get some trees that are cool. These are the giant sequoias from the Moore Woods uh, trip Laura and I took out in San Francisco. That was cool. So this one I'll be pruning up soon. It's an eastern uh, cedar, eastern white cedar. Now, it doesn't look anything like a Thuja occidentalis. I've, I actually have never seen anything that looks like this. But I just know it's an eastern white cedar because that's what I ordered from seeds.com. <laughs> um, so I'll be pruning those up. Um, I know that when some people talk about Thuja occidentalis, they call them eastern cedars, but the, the, this is not a Thuja. So anyways, uh, this, this is um, sweet birch group planting that's filling in nicely i've got our zelkova in a duck pot with the buddha and it's growing slowly but well, there's a wasp in there <laughs> it's growing slowly but steadily and i think it's adjusted to its repot and really hard root prune so adding the moss for moisture retention was a good idea i'm glad i did that okay another baby pine astrobus a fig Trident maple, Thuja, uh, my azalea bonsai is starting to leaf out. So hopefully I'll have another flowering bonsai this year. See, it's got a nice start to that structure. That was a nursery rescue, so it's it really hasn't had that much pruning. Uh, my crepe myrtle, it's starting to look nice. I love how these have the red veins and the light green leaves. It's really attractive. Black locust. He was attacked by some black aphids. This one's outside. And then I just found spider mites crawling all over scale insect on one of my black locusts inside. I had done a video on the top three trees to not grow for beginners, and that was one of them for that reason. The bugs love them. Insects love black locusts. Do not get them, beginners. Or people who don't want to deal with bugs. All right, this thing, holy cow. This was literally, this black locust was literally a stick a week ago literally oh my gosh that is so exciting did i do a video on it i don't know i might have okay you see my zelkovas i had pruned them a couple months ago or a month ago and they're just dynamite the uh golden junipers the golden horizontalis juniper horizontalis uh, Laura and I prune those three bad boys up, and you see in the summer why it gets its name for the golden. It's nice, bright yellow. It's not dead or dry or anything like that. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, okay, battery's got to be almost dead. Okay, come over here. So this tropical planting is just righteous right now. I'm, 
absolutely loving it. So they said that they grow close to marshes and stuff in... It could be Madagascar. I don't know. I look up a lot of stuff. Might have been. Todd's Tropicals. Hit me up. You know. Uh, the second of the three devilish trees I don't want to grow, an avocado has decided he's going to pop up probably after being dormant for two years. So I'll probably kill that one too because they all die on me. I think this is a Rose of Sharon. Originally I thought it was a Korean birch, but now I'm learning that what I thought or Korean birches are Rose of Sharon. So, blueberry bonsai, a little maple has grown, decided to grow up alongside it. So, that's cool. Uh, another sweet birch forest planting. See, just everything looks good and healthy. Oh, I hear the announcer. So, this is my last little boom, boom. Okay, so some trident maples. These are, you know, I got these bare rooted. They're a couple years old. Eventually, they'll be cool. Look at this one, I'm going to end up styling. Oh, yeah. I believe that's a scotch pine. Okay, quick. I'll show you the Delonyx Regia that are coming up. Boom, boom, from seed. All right, y'all. So, um, the game is over. My, my phone slash camera is now charged up. So, I figured I would finish the update inside. The, uh, the Totem Hotspur game was literally, like, more boring than watching paint dry. One goal, and it was an own goal. So, anyways... This is my pathos. Starts in a ginormous terracotta pot there. Boom, boom. Got it crawling up on some eye hooks going across the ceiling. I think it looks nice with this black and white, um, you know, flower painting. And then it breaks up the monotony of the white laundry doors, you know. All right, so coming into the plant room. This guy's looking cool. If you recall, these were three separate plants, um, Rojo Philodendrum, Mojo Rojo, and then something. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted a tropical planting together, and so I, you know, I made it happen, and they're really starting to come back nicely. You see the sway of this trunk? I absolutely love that. And then the other one over here with its nice aerial roots. So what you do is you prune off the leaf and then eventually this dries off and you pop it off and it looks like this. So it looked really ugly for a while, but it's really starting to shape up. And this guy actually fell off the table and got blown over with the wind during filming. So it had really gotten pruned a lot more severely than I wanted it to, but a lot of new growth has just popped out. They just roll out in the form of these. And open up so i think those look really nice together see this one still has a couple of healthy leaves it has one coming in there this one is kicking off nicely if this this leaf uh the only one that it had was kind of damaged i think from the planting so it was just unsightly so i just recently pruned that off so we've got my uh, orange tree or lemon tree yeah lemon tree growing back nicely um a lot of my citrus took a huge hit this year uh, from scale and then they just didn't recover with the the repotting and um you know the treatment process so here's a little plant somebody had brought me it's an annual but i kept it inside over winter and i got one of them to survive they brought me a few um uh, so that's looking pretty, just as like a little accent plant there. I had the original avocado tree. Well, this is like my eighth. The other seven have died. Now a newbie's growing up. So I have three new avocado plants growing unintentionally. And I had a Delonyx regia germinate in here. So if you quickly saw before my phone died outside, I have three Delonyx regia growing. Um, and so I'm really psyched. Here's one of those tried up maples. It's the only one that I kept inside uh, just as an experiment and because I had put it in a plant with a built-in drip tray. So that's not good for outside. This is an annual. I always I prune it back. Maybe eventually it'll turn into some sort of a bonsai, but otherwise, just like the others, they just kind of look nice inside. I like this room to have like a tropical feel. So I've got some spider plants coming out of an old fountain that I got from a move job. 
Got this fig growing in ginormous. The Delonyx is filling in nicely. Boom, boom. There's my Delonyx Regia, my prize tree. I'm just letting it grow nice and full. It had a really hard pruning and repotting a couple of months ago. And as you see, it uh, has done really well with the new soil compound. It's new pot. I'm assuming the roots are growing back healthy. Nice little jade plant. That's getting a little crowded in there, but I think it looks really nice right now. Um, this is a... What is it? Um, geez. I'll come back to that. I'm... <laughs> Oh, a Canary Island um, date palm tree. Jeez. Okay. Uh, these are just some accent plants. Usually the accent plants and things like that are something I've gotten as gifts or they were giveaways. I, do, I don't really spend money on something that wouldn't be bonsai related. I hardly spend money on bonsai stuff. This is what I was so excited to show you. I have this one and the group planting in the other room. All four of my bobab trees, my African bobabs, have come back from dormancy. I was really afraid because they're such a rare species and not meant for here or inside or anything that they were dead. They were just looking like sticks and uh, a lot of growth very recently. Green aphids like them. So I gave them a little spray this morning with some diluted um, dish soap and water. And then I sprayed them again with the water to wash the soap off the residue so the leaves don't burn. This is a Rose of Sharon. I showed in a previous video, I thought it was a Korean birch all this time, but out of nowhere, um, it started getting all these nice little, um, there's another bud on here. Oh yeah, here. These little buds, and I'm like, okay, cool, what's about to happen? Then all of a sudden there was a purple rose of Sharon flower. So I have plenty of them on the property. I'm assuming somehow a seed got in there, even though it's an indoor tree. Weird. Here are me and my grand kitty. I love my grand cat. That's coffee bean. I call her Grand Beanie. <laughs> She's my daughter's calico cat, which obviously Franny's been home from New York through this entire uh, pandemic. So I've gotten to spend plenty of time with my grand kitty. So this thing's growing back nicely. I gave it a hard pruning. And I actually made three really cool uh, mame um, bonsai from its cuttings. I'll show you those in a minute and they're doing really well. They're budding out. Here's my queen of the night. It's getting tall and gnarly. Like, you know, I like my larger plantings. Keep my bonsai small and I keep my tropicals crazy. A hydrangea is just finishing blooming. Most of mine are outside, but I like to just keep some plants inside so they don't have to go through the torment of the transition season. So here I was a dumbass. And I have a juniper here. This is from some castle in the Alps in Italy. We were driving through. I took a, one of its cones and got one, one of them to grow. And it's looking so nice. But, of course, I put it in a tray where I had all these jade cuttings. And you can't just throw the jades outside. So I think I'll have to wait till fall. And then um, I will transplant that bad boy out of this little tray and just let let those jades grow for a few years they might turn into something cool these are all my little spiderettes that i saved from the mama plant when i pruned her back hard and they're just filling in nice because that's what spider plants do they're really good or for, they're really good for cleaning the air so i like to have a lot of them around this was uh, an experiment a poinsettia group planting and maybe one or two of the seven have lived so I don't care it was free it came from an existing you know planting that had already run its course here is an office plant from when Laura used to go to the office that I rescued and it's looking nice and shiny and healthy and growing and wildly here is a sago palm Laura's birthday is coming up next week uh, she is a cancer sign. And um, anyways, we took a trip our first year together down to Beaufort, South Carolina, and went out to um, Hunting Huntington Island and went to this awesome little nursery and farm stand called Barefoot. Barefoot Bubba's, I think. No, not Barefoot Bubba's. Uh, Barefoot Farms. 
Barefoot Bubba's is like a paddleboard rental place further down the street. Anyways, um, and I negotiated with the owner. She was a sweet lady and got this thing for 40 bucks. And that was, you know, one of Laura's birthday presents. So this will be its fourth year. This is its, no, its third year. Because I cut off two years worth of growth and this is last year's growth. Now this is the new stuff. So I guess we are going on the fourth year of having it. So that is really freaking cool. I love it. It's this thing, that is going to be the size of this probably in a week. They grow really fast. So I'm poinsettias from Christmas. Just, you know, letting them live. I'm, I'm not looking to do any more poinsettia bonsais. I have a couple going. Uh, spider plants. Do, 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 do. We're getting dinner ready. Franny's staying out of my way. <laughs> um, so I pruned these pineapple guava trees. Boom and boom on a previous video. And uh, yeah, a little bit a little bit of new growth coming out of the inner nodes. Maybe you can see that, maybe you can't. And here's one of my poinsettia bonsais. This one's cool because it gets um, red and white speckled leaves uh, when they change. The mama spider plant. This is like a masterpiece over here. I love this thing. You have zigzag cacti, you have spider plants, you have just some random succulents. There's this huge cacti that, it was a nub. So this thing was just a tiny nub and it was from a client and I, I did a plant rescue and I actually replaced it with a jade, gave them back a nice looking planting and I just took my time and let this thing grow. And so that's where it started. <laughs> and now it's got branches here. I wrap all the way down and around here. This is the stuff I'm talking about, people. This is this is what you can't buy. And you have to just give time and let things get weird. This is like a little mini rainforest, okay? And then above the rainforest is one of my favorite trees that I'm putting off doing some dead wood work too. It's got my Marine Corps Bulldog in there. Nice piece of local quartz. So this is my fully cascading juniper, and it's grown in nice and full down here. Had some spider mite activity back here that uh, is going to set me up nicely. I'll probably keep like the majority of this branch here, take off all the little ones, and make like a little gin, and then just have the one side growing off and hopefully get a big gnarly trunk that's fully exposed, you know, no distractions on it. So yeah, if... You don't know what's up with bonsai, you're just into plants. These things are really easy to grow. They don't take a lot of maintenance, not a lot of water. And you see, like, all you do is give them water, sun, and time. And it's really cool. Uh, anyways, moving on. Got this, um, this is one of the cherimoyas. It's a fruiting vine. And it's looking nice, growing back nice. This is where Laura's desk main hub is. She's got the waterfront view at the pond down there. She gets to see the whole field, the dog's yard, the chickens. These rows of Sharon are gonna be blooming really quickly. So there'll be hummingbirds everywhere and, and uh, butterflies. But this window is just glorious for tropicals. Like the Shiflera roots over lava rock. It's looking really nice. Uh, this is that triple little mock forest succulent planting Laura and I did together. That's looking really healthy. Uh, there's my three zebra plant mame, or not zebra plant, excuse me, pencil cactus. Looking nice. Uh, Franny's jade, you see it's coming back strong. We had pretty much pruned everything off the, the two woody trunks and let this little baby, it was tiny, come in because um, we have an obsession with three in this family. Here's a little Christmas cactus, not doing much, but it survived a fall off the mantle, so I'm happy that it's doing well. Laura hanging out on our Jamaican planting, the pencil cactus. This aloe is holding up my geranium bonsai that's sweeping so much it's like going to grow out of the pot. So I'm waiting for it to get done blooming, as you see. Nice pink flowers everywhere. Um, but it starts back here in this pot. <laughs> so this is coming in nice. That's eventually what's going to be left. And we'll start again from anew. So I'm utilizing that aloe plant as a little sturdy helper. The fig, it's generating some new leaves. I wanted to defoliate it when it had the fruit on it, 
because I wanted to I wanted to see like the leaves in smaller form with the fruit. I don't know. I have enough of them where I could do things differently with each plant and get different results. So in here, I think these are called princess ears. They came back nicely. Got my little Eiffel Tower in there from this last, the trip this time last year, boo. And I think it's a dead gum tree because that's what they like to do. They like to die. That was number three of three trees not to grow if you're a beginner. This is a dahlia. And I had just gotten these little uh, cones, I think they call them. Mm, spud, I don't know. They call them something. Tubers. Yeah, I had gotten them. Um, and I've had this one going for f a little over four years. It comes out. It flowers these nice white flowers. It crawls with the sun. It's a nice hanging plant. And then, um, and then I just prune it off. Squirt bottle the tuber again, and it kicks off some new stuff. Starts the whole process. So this guy, that was the black locust I was talking about earlier. It's getting really cool. Like down here, I think it has a really nice start. But I wanted to just let it grow wildly and thicken up with this avocado plant. But then, you know, I noticed that it had scale insects. So I treat it for the scale insects. I'm watering. I'm looking over here. I'm like, man, that thing's looking rough. And I come over and crawling on top of the scale insects were all these spider mites and making their webbing and all the new growth. And, I, and at the top of all these avocados, I'm like, what the heck? So I did a, I did a spider mite treatment on it today. I may have to, um, I may have to like, do the pruning early and that's what I'll do. I'm coming in, I'm taking this whole thing off and start with that. Um, but it might recover. We'll see. We'll see. Sometimes the leaves on these, after you treat them, they all just turn yellow and fall off. And that's in that case, I'll, I'll prune it. So the fugly plant has not started budding back yet, but we'll see. So these were the little, uh, mame babies I was telling you about came from the cuttings. I think they turned it out nice. They have that the little tiny little growth coming in. They end up getting about that big, these things. Um, but for now, I think they're kind of the perfect size. And it shows me, I think they could actually, they could have some potential. So here is, I was thinking that this was, so this was the Korean birch, I thought, that I planted as a mame. But now it came from that Rose of Sharon. So this is actually me a flowering mame. I'm even more excited about that. This guy didn't make it, Thuja, and this little Pinostroba sweeping white pines looking nice. Finally got something to grow in this pot. I killed like so many, so I got two little spider plants, and they're growing on some coral, and a nice little Italian fig from a cutting that rooted well in water. I think figs have that natural um, rooting hormone, so they're really easy to do. You know the mama pencil cactus. I am going to be running out of time on what I can uh, fit and then edit this video. So I'm just going to quick, quick, boom, 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 boom. Uh, lots of cool cuttings. Got some citrus coming in. So where some died, I have some success for the future. Uh, blue jacarandas are filling in nicely. Uh, we're flowering out here. See, I think it's important having a good mix. The bamboo are budding out nice. They took a hard pruning. Um, this one was like just last week, and I took it down to one leaf, and as you see how quickly they grow. Uh, bobabs, boom. My bobab planting of three with the meerkats. This is like my favorite landscape yet. It's got so much future to it, so much potential. But like, I've just been gathering little pieces to when I could refine it. Like these rocks I love as the color, you know. And then this nice big rough looking one sandy blue jacks growing in thick they had some green aphids on this morning too these guys norfolk island pines confuse me i don't know um i had i believe it is a delonix regia pop up in one of my chili pepper bonsai pots i don't know why or how